You can put your MetaHuman into Motion Builder, and the next thing you know, you've got the face smeared across the screen in this weird horror movie situation like this. It's not exactly ideal for maintaining realism. But don't worry, in this video, I'll show you a quick and easy solution in Motion Builder using a 20-year-old tool you've probably never heard of, so no more need for those round trips through Maya and Blender. Here we have our MetaHuman face mesh in Motion Builder. And if we just grab one of these joints to move it around, you can see as we move it away from the center, there's quite a chunk of the face that gets sort of dragged back or smeared back to the center. You can see these vertices are pulling across. This usually means there's some kind of problem with the skin weights. So the skin weights are what binds our mesh to the skeleton joints in our character. So each one of these vertices where these lines cross is given a weight value that it basically tells it how much it needs to follow one of these joints. So if we look at this leg, we can see we've got our thigh and then we've got our calf and then when this bends, basically the skin weights are telling it, telling all these vertices how to move when this joint bends. So if we look up here, the vertices up here probably have a weight value of about one, and they're all weighted to this thigh. So that's why when the leg moves, they don't move at all. So it keeps the things looking solid. So you can see it's got it down here as well. If we look at the calf, you can see the vertices around here, they're also probably weighted around one. So it keeps this leg looking nice and solid here. And then if we look at the joints close to the knee, so as a rough sort of guide, the closer the vertices are to a joint, the more they share the weight value. And then as they move away from the joint, that weight value falls off. So you can see here, the vertices around the knee, so these ones here are probably weighted sort of half and half between the thigh and the calf. And then as they move away from the joints, so sort of up here, these vertices up here are probably going to be weighted about 0.7 and 0.3 with the thigh. And then these vertices down here are going to be about the same where they're 0 0.7, 0 0.3, but with the calf. And then as the vertices get further away from the joint, they'll go back to one. So the idea is to give us a nice smooth blend between the solid part of the thigh and the solid part of the calf, and also give us something that resembles the shape of a knee or an elbow or something like that. So knowing this, if we come back to our face mesh, just show the joints again, so we can see if we move this joint, we can see our face smears. So these vertices out here have obviously been weighted with something else. We just undo that and put it back to the center. Now if we grab this entire hierarchy, so if we come down to this root node, and then if we move this around, we can see there's no weird stretching going on with the face. But if we grab the root, you can see as soon as we grab that root, we can start getting that stretching. So for some reason, the skin weights in this head haven't exported correctly, and they're getting skin to the root of our character. Now this can happen when you export a character, and sometimes if the bones are missing and things like that, the software will reassign the skin weights to any random joint, which might be what's happening here. After a bit of digging with Python, it looks like the face mesh is getting exported from Unreal with its skin cluster mode set to total 100. So this means Motion Builder is expecting values which add up to 100%, so basically between 0 and 100. But what's weird is the skin weights in Unreal are normalized, so they're set from 0 to 1. When you look at the actual skin values on this mesh in Motion Builder, you can see these values are actually set between 0 and 1. So they're normalized, they're not between 1 and 100. And what's even weirder is, the other objects that you export from Unreal also have the same skin cluster mode set to total 100, but they don't have the same issues. So that's the same with the legs that we can see here, with the shoes, the rest of the skin, or anything. None of those have the same issues. It's just the face mesh, and it's just this particular set of vertices. So to try and fix this in Motion Builder, I decided to blow the dust off an old tool that's been around since Motion Builder 6, called the Skins Tool. This is where things got a little bit weird. So the idea with the Skin Tool was you could use this in Motion Builder to adjust the skin weights like you would with Maya's Paint Skin Weights tool, but this uses sliders instead of a paintbrush. So the plan was just to, as you can see, you just drop the model in here, and then I'd use this to adjust the skin weights for these stray vertices, and the problem would be fixed. But it turns out it's way easier than even that. So to fix this, all you actually have to do is come up into Window, Skins, and then in here, all we need to do is come down, we can and then we're just going to drag this, left click, drag this from here, and drop it into here. And immediately, you can see the skin weights are fixed. So now if we just come in here, if we grab our spine again, and move it around, we can see 
everything's working fine if we come up here into the head we just come down here and grab grab our neck even and rotate this around we can see all the skinning on the head's completely fixed now how I'm not exactly sure but doing another bit of investigation in Python it looks like just adding the face mesh to the skins window changes the FB cluster mode back to normalize which means motion builders are expecting values between 0 and 1 just like a skin mesh you'd export from Maya or Blender or somewhere like that and there you have it a quick and easy solution in motion builder using a 20 year old tool you've probably never heard of or maybe you have have you been using it to fix these issues or maybe you've used a different method let me know in the comments below and if you want to find out even more about motion builder maybe for your next role or for your next project i'll leave a link to my courses in the description below and if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to give this one a like so i know i'm making the right kind of videos and also to help other people find them and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video thank you so much for watching and happy editing